Hello, welcome to the phylum Arthropoda, and you'll see subphylum Crustacea. This since this is a marine and birds class, we're going to mostly focus on the marine varieties, which are the crustaceans. There are very few insects and spiders that uh, live in the marine environment, but mostly we're going to focus on the crustaceans. Here are your objectives that will be covered over uh, three video series. So this one and two others. Here we go, uh, a dragonfly. This is an insect in the phylum Arthropoda. Subphylum Insecta. Here's uh, another insect. Weta. Head lice. Kind of beautiful. Uh, there's a tequila worm, which is a larval stage of an arthropod. Here is a, is this a centipede or a millipede? What do you think? Well, this is a centipede. It's only got one set of arms per segment. And uh, you, it varies a little bit from, a seg from an annelid worm, even though it's segmented. And we'll see why as this video goes along. And here's a millipede. They've got two jointed appendages per segment. The centipedes are predators and the millipedes are grazers. Here's uh, something in the Chelicerata, the another type of arthropod called uh, spiders. And here's another Chelicerate, eight-legged thing called a horseshoe crab. And here's a, um, a very small uh, version of a sea spider, eight legs, a couple of them missing. Uh, you can see giant Let's get our little drawing pen up here. You can see these giant fangs and almost no body. Anyway, that is a um, picnogonid or a, uh, another type of sea spider. Here's uh, the bigger version of it from Antarctica on a, one of our ex staff members. A little um, familiar crab. And here's a copiopod. Very important uh, link in the food chain between um, primary producing uh, phyto photosynthetic algae and fish. It's a beautiful mantis. Here are some barnacles. You wouldn't think that these things would be the same, would have a similar body plan to uh, a crayfish, but they do, and you'll know why by the end of the video. Uh, here's an isopod. Predating on a cow nose eye. Here's a uh, freshwater crayfish. And here's a bigger version of a crayfish. This is the American lobster. And there's a really big version of a spider crab. This is a deep water animal. Pretty amazing beast. Okay, um, yeah, the, on that massive amount of diversity that we've seen. They all have the same body plan. Arthro. For, find that little drawer. There we go. Arthro. That's jointed. And pode. We've seen that plenty of times. A foot. So a jointed foot. And that's um, true because these things have jointed appendages, which are quite different than the annelids, even though they are they were segmented uh, when you look at the millipede at appendages on each segment these ones are jointed appendages and the annelids did not have jointed appendages so the the most diverse the most successful of any animal phyla over a million species most of those are insects um, that we know of so but they they make up 80 percent of all the species of animals and they've got two characteristics that you need to know. The jointed appendages is one, and then this chitinous exoskeleton. Let's see if you can remember where we saw chitin before in our um, like a little tour through the phyla. Okay, the exoskeleton, which is sometimes you'll see um, a uh, full crayfish sitting out in the open and you go up and swim up to it and pick it up and it's just the shell. And that's what you're going to see and often the, uh, the 
many, many, uh, this time of year, crabs that are washed up on the, the beach, the paddle crabs, those are just the exoskeletons that have been molted. So the exoskeleton is like a, um, uh, a hard shell outside the body. It's got uh, connective tissue in between the plates of it, and it's an armor. But it doesn't grow, and so every once in a while they have to shed it off. And they are much smarter than annelids, and mostly dioecious, so mostly male or female. And this is a, an, an important video, or slide right here. So if we look at our annelid, and we can see the evolutionary pathway between the annelid and the, um, the arthropods. They were thought to have evolved from arthropods, or arthropods are thought to have evolved from annelids. Let's start with the fact that annelids have a cuticle. If you remember that, they have a, a, a it's, it's a uh, flexible, uh, but still uh, shape providing cuticle that, that resists bulges, and it's an outside covering over the entire body. Now, if you, you can just imagine that with a little bit of um, evolutionary steps, it turns, it gets a little bit hardened, and it does turn into the exoskeleton of the arthropods. Next thing you know about the arthropods or the annelids is they have these repeating segments. Well, arthropods also have segments um, and a various number of repeating segments, but notice how they're specialized. Okay, so we just have more specialization in the segments of the arthropods than the annelids. And also, the um, parapodia and setae you can still see setae at the end of a arthropod appendage, but the parapodia have been um, modified into a this jointed appendages. So we've got joints that articulate, and they have specialized as well for different parts of different functions along the length of the body. Okay. So if we look here, we've got function, we've got appendages that are used for grasping. We've got appendages for manipulating food around the mouth, appendages for walking. These appendages at the back are called swimmerettes, but also in the female, modified for carrying eggs. And then finally, appendages modified for, for swimming. So, Instead of just repeating segment after segment that look exactly the same, we also have, we just have specialization in the arthropods. Within the arthropods, okay, so you're going to need to be familiar with these different uh, subphyla. Chelicerata, so no antenna, and rudimentary gills. So, let's put my little drawer. There we go. So, essentially looking at something like this. Okay, no antenna. Here's a happy little face. They've got eight legs. Three, four, and that's your typical spider. All right. Abdomen and cephalothorax, which is the cephalus and the thorax put together. Okay, the next one, hexapoda. Okay, these are your insects. And hex, we know, means six. That's because they have six legs. All right, so they have something more like this. There's, there was my painful drawing. One pair of antenna. So we're just drawing half of the body on each side. So then we got three pairs of legs and one pair of antenna. And that's your, and three body parts. You've got the abdomen, the thorax and the cephalus or the head and then finally the crustaceans which have two pairs of antenna so they've got similar to the body body plane to the spiders oh, this can be more segmented they've got an abdomen and then they've got the what's the cephalus the cephalothorax so the cephalus and the thorax um, are 
merged together into one called the cephalothorax. And then they have one, two pairs of antenna, and um, many, many different uh, numbers of appendages. So crustaceans, two pairs of antenna, gills, and they're found in all marine and most freshwater environments. Okay. So now we know the three subphylum, and we'll start looking at the individual characteristics of the subphylum in the next video.